and that giraffe still won't let me put a saddle back on it. I don't get it. They hate this. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you a cheap DIY way of shiplap in your home. This is one of those things where one wall can remake a room for you. Now this is part two in my living room renovation series. The first one, go back and watch that if you wanna learn how to put in vinyl plank flooring all on your own. Again, don't have to hire anybody. You don't have to spend a boatload of money. I'll show you how to do it. I'm gonna give you some tips and some tricks. Let's get into it right now. All right, so the first thing we need to do is prepare the wall. So remove everything you got hanging. Uh, for years, my wife begged me for a mantle. And so a couple years ago, I put up this one by four and she had a mantle, but it, it's, it's not good enough anymore. I'm tired of hearing about it. Here, I'm just using a paint scraper and a hammer just to break the edges and this wooden trim just comes right off. Next is the tile. The black that you see on the wall there that's like a metal insert for the propane fireplace. So where the tile was attached to the metal, it come off pretty easy. But um, when it's on the drywall, not so much. So with removing some of that tile, it, obviously it does damage some of the drywall. So here I'm just making some straight lines so I can just replace this drywall. So now I just gotta fix this. The drywall is not attached here, so I wanna make sure that it has a good foundation. So I'm just gonna run in a few screws. Keep it all tight. Here's a great tip. These are what they use at Home Depot for dividing all of their sheetrock. And these are perfect size for replacing this. So I went to Home Depot and instead of buying sheetrock, I just went and asked them, okay, can I have these? And they're, you know, they're kind of glued together, but they peel right apart very easily so that's like something you know you just got to keep your eye open and think about what you can do to save money here and there and this was a perfect way to just instead of buying a whole sheet or even just one of those project sheets that are still like two by two two by four these were free So I live in the Northeast and these are rampant this time of year, but I'm trying to figure out how this guy got on here. Yep, that's a deer tick. Glad I found it before it found me. Now you want to be sure to remove all remaining grout all around here because you want your tile to have a nice smooth surface to adhere to. And here's where I'm going to save you some serious cash. This is what we're using for the shiplap. 1 8 inch plywood. That's how you're going to save money. And if you want to save your back, pick one of these up from Home Depot. It's like 7 bucks. Helps you carry it in. This is my helper. If you've got kids that are old enough to, you know, be around the shop and help out, get them in the shop and help out. Bye. All right, finally, we're going to make these shiplap boards. So this is the 1 8 inch plywood, and we're going to cut it down into strips. Now, the width of the strips is up to you. I think I went with 5 inches. I can't quite remember, but it's really your preference. And I know what some of you were thinking. You don't need a table saw for this. A circular saw, cheap one and a straight edge will do the same thing. Now knock down all the edges that you just cut so you don't get any splinters. So to sand that with, this is just a 120 sanding sponge. For painting them, I'm gonna go with these smooth surface high density foam rollers or six inches. And I'm going with the Glidden Diamond Ultra Scrubbable One Coat Paint. One coat, you know what we always say about those one coat paints, right? They're, they're, they're two coat paints, but we'll, you know, we'll see how it goes.
Okay, so I have a coat of paint on here and it did raise the grain a, a little bit. So I'm just using, this goes on my orbital sander. It's a spongy one, it's not like the rigid one. And I'm actually just putting on some 400 grit. And I'm just gonna lightly go over this just to knock down all the high spots where the grain has raised up. And it's just much smoother. And it's barely really taking any paint off, so it's not like I have to add an extra coat or anything like that, but it just, it, it's just smoother to the touch. Okay. All right, so now you take this one away and you put it on the tailgate, okay? And then Jack brings me one. The tailgate over here. And then Jack puts one here. I'm gonna go get another one right Yep, you're gonna put it like this. Nope. And yes, I was here earlier. Okay. And then you put one right on top of it next time. Okay? Are you ready? And yes, in case you weren't watching that first bit, I was helping in the workshop. Alright, so here's the dilemma I'm having. So the idea is we're going to put these tiles up six inches around each side of the fireplace. So six inches down, six inches out, six inches on top, so all the way around. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to determine do I put the tile up first or do I do shiplap and leave? No, it makes sense to do the tile first because then I can put the shiplap up to it. And these are 12 inch across and I'm only using half. So I won't have a precise measurement until I get them up here. And then I can put the trim. There's gonna be a little piece of uh, trim that goes around it before the ship lap starts too. So I think it makes sense to uh, get ready to get this up on the wall. So I'm gonna have it six inches here and then ship lap is gonna be down here. So what I need to first do is uh, get the measurement from here uh, up to where six inches starts and I'm just gonna get a piece of scrap board that way I can rest these on there and it won't slide down. So I think I'll start on that first. So my trial and error is your benefit because I'm gonna tell you what works and what doesn't work. So what I'm doing here is I use some two-sided tape and I put the tiles. Now I'm using really small tiles. This would be different for larger tiles, but I got a diamond blade for my cutoff wheel and I'm like, oh, this should work. No, it didn't work. So my next thought is I'm gonna put some clamps down on the board to keep the board from bouncing up and down. See if that helps. Well, guess what? It didn't help. You can see it's still chipping out pretty good. It's not good enough for what I need. Now remember, these are small tiles. If you're using a larger tile, this method may work. So I decided I'm going to leave the tiles while I think it over to figure out what's going to work best. So what I'm doing now is I'm painting the wall the color that I'm going to be painting the boards. Now with the faux ship lap, there's a gap in between each board. So when you're looking through it, you don't want to see a different color paint. You want to see the same paint. That's what gives it that look. Now I'm just double checking and making sure everything's smooth. I want to make sure everything has a good surface to bond to. Okay, I probably should have started here first, but a wet tile saw is the way to go. I happen to be able to borrow this from a buddy of mine, but you can actually rent these from certain Home Depots and other stores for pretty cheap instead of having to buy one. But you can see it cuts like butter. This is definitely the way to go. Let's get this tile on the wall. I'm using this board to support the tiles. My tile is not gonna go all the way to the floor, so I need something underneath it to support it, not letting it drip down the wall while that mortar dries behind it. And with these very small tiles, depending on how you cut them, you may have to actually insert them one by one to fill in some gaps. You're definitely gonna want a nice straight reference line to go by, and that's what I just did there. So you can see there's one cut here and one cut here. Then it's just rinse and repeat. This is what I was talking about, having to insert them one, one piece at a time. Again, this is with the small tiles. If you're using large format tiles, then this will be a breeze for you. And you're gonna wanna pick up some of those rubber spacers. They're tile spacers. 
it basically it, you have to insert these in between each tile and that way it just keeps the same reference line between all the tiles and then once it dries you just pull them out you can kind of see them here you gotta make this cut to get around the corner that was fun and you know what it is fun because it's not hard like i said you can do this it just takes time if you have the patience and the time and you want to save some cash then you can do it Now, and depending on what kind of tile you pick, it can be tedious, but once it's done, it looks great. All right, so before I put up the shiplap boards, a really good idea is to mark your studs, all right? Because when you're putting up the shiplap, if you know, I'm gonna be using 18 gauge brad nails. If I know where the studs are, instead of guessing, it's just gonna save me a lot of time later on and less headache for sure. I have one of those, you know, stud finders, and the one I have, I, I've gone through like two or three of them, and I swear I get mixed results, and basically my go-to now is, and you've probably seen this before, but magnets. So I just search around, and as soon as, there you go, that's the screw right there, so I know that there's a stud right there. So what I do is I mark it here, and then I just go up. If I go up a straight line, there's another one there. Now I can go to straight edge, and mark my studs all the way down. So that way I'm gonna start at the top. And as I'm going down, I put it up and I'll just see the line. I just follow the line as I go down, shooting those brad nails in. It's just gonna save a lot of time later on, for sure. And now I can't find them, so it works that good. Now I'm gonna be using an 18 gauge brad nailer, but you don't have to. You can just use nails and a hammer. Anybody can do this, I promise. And the way I justify these purchases is, I like to do these projects all around the house. So if I spend a couple hundred bucks on a brad nailer, it's still cheaper than hiring someone and I can use these on a bunch of other projects. Here you can see, I'm just using a scrap piece of that plywood I used to cut this for a spacer. You just keep sliding this around, moving it to where you need to. Make sure everything's tight, throw in a few nails. A lot of nails. All right, as you can see, for the next board, you know, leaving that little gap here, it's going to run into the tile I just put up. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and notch this board out. But besides the notch, do you see anything else wrong with this issue? Anybody? You guys see it? I'll put it up on the screen here, give you a little hint. Yeah, so this is part of the insert for the fireplace. This is a propane fireplace. And this is part of the, I believe this is just part of the chimney that brings it up, this metal piece. But you can see this gap here. So if we have the next board, obviously it's perfectly in line with where I need my gap to be and you're gonna see right through there. So I gotta come up with something to fill this space. I'm gonna have to hammer this uh, metal in just a little bit to get it flat. But yeah, I gotta come up with something. I'd ask for ideas in the comments, but I won't be able to read them until the video's out, so that's not gonna help me. Oh yeah, remember these? just happens to fit in here perfectly and again they were free just adding some spackling here to fill it all in make it all nice before I paint it Second shot. Third shot. Oh, come.
recording? Yeah. You're sure? Yes. 100%? Yes. Okay. So we got 59. Just making sure that it's about the same going down. This is 58 and three quarters. So we have some leeway with the trim. So we're gonna go 58 in five eighths. 58 and 5 eighths. I don't know if you guys have one of these. These are the fast cap. I think most YouTubers have them, but I find it, it's great. You just write your measurements right on here. Wait, what did I say it was? 58 by something? 58 and 3 quarters. So as long as you're not talking to a camera and you make yourself forget what the number is, you just write it down quickly and you got it. Now you're rolling, 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 rolling. I'm gonna keep that in. Really? Yep. Video, video number two in the series of the living room remodel. Feature wall is complete. My faux ship lap, much cheaper to do it this way, cutting it with the, with the uh, plywood strips. Added in some trim around, new tile, put up this mantelpiece. Uh, yeah, so stick around for the next video. It's gonna be coming out shortly. That'll be the last video of number three in the series. I'm gonna show you guys how to build this floating console and I'm gonna put up some trim and then I'll do the big reveal. So stick around, like, subscribe, hit the bell, get your notifications so you can see when the last video comes out. And uh, thanks for stopping by. They hate this. It's from Ghostbusters.